Hello, tubers. I got a neat little project on the electric bench here. Friend brought over this trolling motor, said it didn't work. Let's take a look at it. Let's see if we can help him out. Now, I have it hooked to my current limited power supply. And if we press the button here, we're simulating a fully charged battery. We turn the throttle, and as he said, both ways, it does nothing. So, let's continue. Alright, I got the cover off, so let's have a look inside here. And we'll see these two leads would go to the batteries. These two here would go to the motor. And we got a little pot right here that's going to change resistance to the circuit board when you turn the handle, which in turn changes the pulse width going to that electric motor controlling the speed. We need to know if this works first. So what I did, I grabbed a motor from upstairs. We're going to hook that on and then we can confirm this part is good or bad. Let's try her out here. Variable speed, working fine in that direction. Try the other one. So now we've confirmed everything on the circuit board here is working fine and we should be looking at the motor. Here's something that is very important too for you do it yourself first to be aware of. If you're using a meter instead of a motor, that's not going to simulate the real world load on the circuitry here. Watch the meter, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now we run the throttle, and you'll notice the voltage isn't really varying much. So what I'm seeing here is this can be deceiving. You might think something's wrong on a circuit board when it's totally fine if you're using a meter. For a more readily available way to test these, other than the motor, if you had a couple of tail lamp bulbs, wire them in a series circuit, and then they're good for 24 volts. That works just fine too. Well, getting started on the motor, I marked the case for reclocking orientation. Took a wire brush, clean the schmig mites off where I believe this should separate here. Clean the shaft with some 3M scuffy pad. And right off the bat, I seen a problem where the pin here that drives the propeller, it's not only busted, but it's bent. And that should really be the full length of this slot in here, so I'll have to make a new one of them. And the cover only wants to come off about this far. I don't want to force it, so I think there's a little booger on the shaft right here from where that pin went through, so got some 220. We're going to address that problem right now. And that's how it should come apart, not no pry bar or something. It's kind of enjoyable working on something you never had a part before to see how these things tick. So, oh yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of grizzly on the armature, so that's going to need some cleaning up. And let's have a look inside here. Yeah, brush holders are hanging up. That's your problem right there. So, yeah, these should these should have uh, came out when I pull that out which keeps the springs here, keep the load on the brushes, which keep them in contact with the armature. They're not doing that, so yeah, there's a problem. This brush holder here is held in by two T20 Torx screws. And uh, let's get that out of there. Oh, made really nice. They actually got, you can, slide these connectors off and it's going to be in your hand. I think we better mark them though so the throttle don't end up backwards when we're all done. Yeah, I placed the brush holder back in here too just to make a little orientation mark there. Is it needed? I don't know but it uh, eh, might come in handy later. Who knows? So that's really nice how this is made. You could probably even buy one of these new from the manufacturer of this, but I'm going to see if I can refurbish this piece here. So, let's continue. Now 
There's two boogers, one on each side here, so I dressed them off with the razor knife. But the brush still felt really tight in the bore, which is not good. So this one here, I've done already. I did three to four sides, sanded them lightly, and then added a little bit extra clearance, which in turn should extend motor life. There's a little lock tab that holds this spade in, and I'm gonna use my tool to release that. It just makes it a little easier to work on it, to sand it for on the bench. And that's what I just removed right there, or released. Now, I'll show you what I've done for sanding it. Okay, so we got her set up on the paper here. And this is like a 220 paper, and we'll give it a few on that side. So you can see. Ah. And on this side. And we're going to try that in the holder. Not too bad, but I think I'm going to go a little more yet. They're still a little bindy. But you get the idea. I gave it a little scruffy. With some 600 grit on the end. There you have it. I'm going to put a little tension on that lock tab so once you slide the connector in, it stays put. For the brush tension spring, all you got to do on that is drop it in the hole. Wind her up and pop it in place. Using some 600 grit in. I want to clean the shaft up a little more too. 600 grit here also. all cleaned up and starting to get ready for assembly. I use synthetic grease on housings to keep the corrosion down uh, on the pins here. I put a little de-electric gel and you don't want the brushes sticking in so you can install the armature. So what I've done here is I got them set so they don't shove the brushes in and once this is the armature is installed then I can trip them probably with a screwdriver or something and then we'll be good to go. So. I'll start putting this together. Put a little dab of synthetic grease on the screws too. Okay, I put a little coat of grease on the gasket too. Let's. Oh, you want to check the bearing? Of course, check him a while back. He's real good. So, no worry there. Let's set this in. And like I was showing you before, them springs had to be released to put the load back on the brushes, so I'm going to trip them springs right now. And that should be all set. Now you got to get the case on. Uh, I put a little more grease on the edge of the case here too. Uh, where they have the permanent magnets in here. They're a real strong force, so you got to make sure the armature stays in contact in the brushes. You don't want that coming back off. This is going to create a heck of a tug installing it. Uh, let's see how it goes. Should be a challenging thing here. Whoa. You got the end cap all cleaned up, greased, ready to go. I thought I'd do the O-rings right away. When I stock all this stuff, Kind of nice, saves you a trip to the store. And, uh, them bolt ones, these were pretty rough. 
So I put a coating of grease around the border on all this too. Now, oh, last but not least, where this pin locks in the propeller to the shaft, I made a new one out of an eighth inch drill bit. And for the propeller nut, I'm just going to put just a dot of blue Loctite on that, not the red. Everything's out of the way. Got her hooked up to the current limited, and uh, yeah, it's time for a test drive. Let's see how she works. fun little project. Uh, I was doing that for one of my friends right? that always helped me out through the years. So feel free to leave a comment and ask a question, whatever you wish there. And uh, yeah, I hope to catch you folks back here again. Yeah, a little heads up for you folks. There's uh, been a few people that asked if I do a shop video. I'm working on one right now about the builds when I first got here. There should be some good information on that one that Maybe you guys could grab some ideas even on. Well, some more stuff that's going to be going on. Uh, some of you are, I'm sure, aware that I want to convert this over to electric. But before I tear that apart, you've got to have a race between the Cushman electric versus gas Yamaha. See which one's faster. But hey, if you folks got any ideas or something too that you're thinking about, put something down below in the comments. I like reading them and uh, yeah. Hopefully it'll be things you enjoy. So thanks for stopping by.